any questions yet. Um, again, you should, you should ask any questions you have on the Slack channel and uh, the chairs will stop me if uh, anything urgent needs to be discussed, uh, needs to be answered uh, here. Right now you are good to go ahead. Okay, very good. So, okay, why Bayesian power to estimation? So think of modeling a physics process as having three ingredients. You have the model itself, which in our case can be a Jetscape framework. It has some, for example, some initial condition, hydrodynamic smash, and this model has model parameters. And as we just discussed, it can be initial condition parameters, viscosities, how they cross section, um, anything you can think of. Now, given these parameters, uh, the model will, pro will produce outputs, observables that you want to compare with data to learn about those parameters. Now, what is trivial is what is called the forward problem. So of course, given the model parameters, it's trivial to get the outputs. That is how a model works. Now, this is not the question we're interested in, actually. What we're interested in is what are the model parameters given the observables? So in a sense, we're interested in the inverse problem. And that's, that's literally the name that is used in literature for this. Given the output of a model, given constraints on the output of a model, how do you constrain the model parameters? Now, typically that's a very difficult problem, even ill-defined problem, because your model is complex. There might not be a one-to-one -one mapping between your model parameters and your observables. And we did not encounter this kind of issues in, let's say when we're undergrad, when we're uh, performing simple experiments, because often our model we were assuming a very simple model where we could invert it easily and we could easily, we had very few parameters, very few observables, and we could easily propagate the uncertainty. But when your model becomes more complex, this problem becomes largely um, unsolvable. And, or at least not exactly. And what Bayesian parameter estimation provide is a solution for this problem. It provides, it's, it's one way to solve this, this, this inverse problem. Now think of it this way. For example, let's say you're given um, experimental measurement for the V2 of pi and the, and the multiplicity of pi. Well, of course, you're not given just a value. You have some uncertainty as well. And what this range of observables, this range of observation correspond to is some patch of model parameter. If you're lucky, it's a continuous patch, but it could even be discontinuous. Um, it, could it could even be non-compact. Now, finding all the possible values of shear viscosity consistent with this is already non-trivial. Now, what makes it even more complicated is the fact that when we say that you know, V2 is 0.04 plus or minus 0.02, we don't mean that V2 is as likely to be anywhere between you know, 0.02 and 0.06. We're saying that the most likely value is probably 0.04, and there's probably a Gaussian distribution, and other values of V2 are possible, but somewhat less likely than the mean. So what you really have when you have observables, when you have measurement, is a prob probability distribution for your, for your observable to take a certain value. So you're trying to map this probability distribution onto your model parameters. So what you find ultimately is a probability distribution for your model parameters. So this is the first thing to remember. Everything you obtain from Bayesian parameter estimation is you obtain probabilistic constraints on your model parameters. So we can already provide a partial answer to the question, uh, when should we use a Bayesian parameter estimation? And there are much more elaborate answers than this, but the rule of thumb is if you have a relatively complex model with a non-trivial dependence between the parameters, you have a large number of parameters, large number of measurements, Bayesian parameter estimation will be extremely useful. 
it will really allow you to systematically propagate uncertainties from the data, but also from your model onto the model parameters. Now, there are also other cases where Bayesian parameters are especially useful. And really, even, in this, even for a simpler problem, you can still use them. It essentially, you, you recover what would be your intuitive answer. So there's typically no harm in, in using them. Now, I assume there's still no